Good morning. It's Wednesday, and as we look at the devotion as a Passion Week, Wednesday is the day that is so often called the day of silence. There's not as much going on. It kind of reminded me in in history uh, the the Texan War for Independence, or we would know it partly as the Alamo and San Jacinto and those things. And at the Alamo, the first couple of days, there was a lot going on. Santa Ana had arrived. The Alamo was closed up. Uh, there was some beginning of cannon fire. And, and then at the end, the last couple of days, there's the fierce fighting, the attack by Santa Ana and all his army, and finally overrunning the Alamo. But in between, in those uh, times, there was still a lot going on, but not as much is said. Santa Ana was coming closer. The defenses of the Alamo were being built up, but not as much was being done outwardly. But inwardly, there was still a lot going on. And whether the line in the sand by Colonel Travis really happened, what did happen was people had determined in their hearts what they were going to do. They were waiting for reinforcements, but in that middle time, as quiet as it may have been, there was a lot going on. And in, in some ways, that's sort of like this Passion Week. <clears throat> There's a lot that's been going on the first couple of days. Uh, Jesus talking, uh, there in the temple, uh, there is the fig tree, there's all sorts of things. And then afterwards, there's going to be uh, the what we call the Last Supper, there's Gethsemane, uh, the rest, the trial, uh, all of those things that lead to the crucifixion. There's a lot that's been going on, but, but Wednesday, we don't hear quite as much. And yet, I believe it's very significant because I believe that as I read the passage, and especially I'm looking at Matthew, I read there and I think it shows a lot about the hearts of people about what's going on, because that matters so much. And I think it shows the deep heart of love and obedience in Jesus, even in a small, small passage. So let's take a look at it. What went on during this time, uh, this Wednesday, as far as we know, there were some things. Uh, so the major characters on Wednesday, there is the chief priest, there's Caiaphas and the elders, and their part, they had determined at that point especially to find a way to arrest Jesus with, with the intention to put him to death. Their hearts were angry. Their hearts were filled with uh, their own desires and fear. The, the, the hearts of the disciples, because what had happened, as you read the passage, is that they're at the house of uh, someone called Simon the leper in Bethany. They're having a banquet there. And Mary, uh, Mary, the, the brother, or the sister, I'm sorry, the sister of of uh, Martha came and broke a, a jar of perfume and anointed Jesus with a very, very costly perfume. And the disciples were distressed because they were saying, why couldn't this be used for the poor? It was like a year's wages. Their heart of confusion and maybe wanting control, the heart of Mary, desiring to honor the Lord. We're told this day the heart of Judas was taken. And after those events, he went to the chief priests and elders and asked, what will you give me if I turn Jesus over to you? And in his heart, it seems of greed, of selfishness, of wanting his own way. Wednesday's the day that he determined he would betray Jesus. Those things, but the heart of Jesus. Now, what, what goes on here? Let me read the passage in Matthew just a little bit. He says this, that while Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, 
a woman came to him, that was Mary, uh, with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining there at the table. And, and then the disciples, you know, they were uh, indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and money given to the poor. And then this is Jesus' answer. And this is what we see of him on this Wednesday. Aware of these, this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The uh, poor you will always have with you, for, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Now, that's just a small part of what Jesus uh, did that day. It, it was a day, I suppose, of rest, uh, possibly of reflection. He didn't go into the city, evidently. Uh, it may have been a time of prayer and and uh, thinking through what was going to happen on Jesus' part. We don't know that for sure. That's That's assuming. But what we do know as we see here, Jesus' heart of obedience and love. I say that because, you see, he recognizes the anointing is preparing him for burial. He has told them that he is going to die. And again, he affirms it, that this is going to happen. I think the, that you're going to assume this is going to happen soon. And, and he doesn't turn away from that. This is almost the, the precursor to Gethsemane. This, this is where he is acknowledging, yes, I am going to die. And in that, his heart of willingly obeying the will of the Father. What a, what a tremendous heart he shows here in this quiet little passage, this short little time. And... I believe you can also read in there his deep heart of love for you and for me. Because you see, he knew what was going to happen, didn't he? He knew the death that was going to come at him in just a couple of short days. And yet, he did not turn aside from it. Here he acknowledges, I'm being prepared for burial. I know the death that is coming. And yet, he willingly did that. And here in this little passage, during this time of quietness and not much going on, he is, he is reminding us, I believe, his heart of obedience and love. You see, he knows what you were like. He knows what I'm like. And yet, in spite of that, he was willing to die. He knew he had to die for the sins of the world, for your sins, for my sins, that we might have eternal redemption. And this little part of this Wednesday, I believe, shows again his deep love for you. His deep love for the world. His deep love for me. And so when you think of this day, this Wednesday, don't think of it as just not much going on. There was a lot going on. To use the example of the Alamo, there was a lot going on those few days that prepared the people for that horrific ending. There was a lot going on here in the lives of the disciples, in the lives of the chief priests, and Jesus in his heart showing what was so dear to him. His compassion and love for us and his willingness to obey the Father that he would give his life for us. A day of silence? Possibly. A day of of great love? Absolutely. And so today, as we reflect on that, let's remember the great love that Jesus has for us. 
that he was willing to give his life for us. I hope you have a great day remembering the love and obedience of Jesus.